Hello. I have the brand new novel by um, Lionel Shriver, and I read it. And I'm quite happy because Lionel Shriver is one of my uh, favorites. I have read, I don't know, four of her books already and enjoyed every one of them. And this one I enjoyed too. I mean, it, it's just kind of great, really. Um, the thing about Lionel Shriver and what I'm not going to be able to tell you on this video is you really have to be there. You have to hang out with her and uh, get all the asides and uh, her, her writing is just so rich with with uh, detail in people's thoughts and what's going on around and and relationship stuff is very very solid I think in her books um, and this one I expected her to write a, a novel having to do with a very hot uh, issue of the day uh, these days because I know how she feels about it as I feel too. She's she's rather uh, conservative in many ways, uh, probably a good deal more conservative than I am. Uh, I'm kind of radical actually. So uh, and all these terms are kind of getting mushy as well as the uber state kind of um, confuses all of us and causes us to try to find some kind of alliance somewhere. So I thought she was going to maybe write a novel about another issue that's been uh, in the in the mainstream for about 10 years or so, but um, she did actually in the form of mania. And what mania is about, uh, the plot of mania, is about a mania and manias that take over our culture and drive everyone into a certain uh, position and uh, everybody's supposed to uh, play along and everybody's supposed to agree and if you don't agree you could be shoved off to the side you could well you could lose your job you could lose a lot of stuff and and uh, that's what's going, and this is kind of something that's more trending lately in the past, well, the internet age, where, well, a lot of us are speaking up, and uh, a lot of us can be tracked in as far as what we say. So the concept of this book is that um, there's, the mania is that there is a, uh, what is it called? Um, mental uh, mental parody. MP, the MP folks have taken over. And mental parody is that uh, we cannot call people stupid anymore. We cannot delineate between the more intelligent and the less intelligent because, well, it, it uh, offends the less, the less intelligent. So we we cannot call people stupid. We cannot call, we cannot uh, suggest, it's, we cannot, it goes on and on where, we, well, you cannot eliminate uh, a candidate from a job if he's not qualified, for instance. And uh, so it goes to kind of absurd lengths, but, you know, she's so good that it doesn't really go off to, to be like incredible. It's all kind of credible in a sense or, or, or credible in, in, a, in a way that we know that what she's really talking about and we feel the actual real feelings that encase this whole situation and this particular, uh, this particular case with the mental parody. It has, uh, it has a family. Uh, a lot of her books have a family. It, it has a, a primary voice in, uh, in, the, in the main character. Um, this is Mrs. Uh, Converse. What is her first name? Uh, 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 um, something Converse. Pers Pearson. Yeah, Pearson. Pearson Converse. So Pearson is a um, a woman who is who is uh, she goes back to her childhood, and her childhood was in um, Jehovah's Witnesses. So she was a Jehovah's Witness as a child, and so we, we see her dealing with being a Jehovah's Witness as a child and coming to the teen enlightened point of going, 
these people are crazy and they're in control of me and they wanted me to do this and that and they're crazy and so she comes to that realization and doesn't want to go to church anymore. Uh, she go, goes into the, the bit about them witnessing how you go have to go around the neighborhood and annoy the neighbors and all that. And they had to drag the kids too. And, you know, with all this embarrassment with the whole thing. And uh, so she um, abandons Jehovah's Witnesses and is taken in by uh, her her high school friend Emily, uh, Emery. Emery is kind of a high school star. She's attractive, she's um, articulate, she's interesting, and uh, they are friends. And uh, Pearson assumes they are best friends. They, they uh, even though the balance of power is kind of way off always, but um, so Emily at 16, uh, does, says she doesn't want to go to church anymore, says she wants to keep this person for a friend, and basically she gets excommunicated from the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses and ends up living with uh, Pearson and her parents. Uh, her fa Pearson's father is a uh, college professor and her mother is a... Mm, I don't remember. So that is what happens with, uh, with uh, Pearson and Pearson grows up to uh, be, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, a teacher herself, and she uh, teaches in in a college. And actually, her uh, her sort of steppish father here, or uh, adopted father, the uh, college professor, uh, gets her a job at um, at the college where he's teaching in this right in the town of uh, uh, Voltaire. It's uh, Voltaire, Pennsylvania is where this is set, a presumably fictional town. I didn't look up Voltaire, Pennsylvania. I didn't think it was necessary. I think it's a, an imagined town. So um, what happens is that uh, Emery uh, um, becomes a star of the uh, mental parody movement and she uh, is kind of an opportunist and this causes a clash between Pearson and Emily because Pearson is not having it. She doesn't like the, the uh, restrictions that are involved with the mental parody uh, situation. She, she uh, makes a stand at some point. She's teaching uh, English literature actually and she, um, she assigns the idiot which even the title is forbidden by this point, that the metal parody movement has gone on so far. So you can't even say idiot or you can't have the title. And uh, so, you know, it, it, she does this to, to make a point. And the point is that she, uh, she finds Child Protective Services at her door, wondering if she's pure enough to hold to keep her children, and she is actually called uh, uh, one of her daughters, the youngest daughter, overhears her calling, uh, saying she's kind of dumber than the other children, and that upsets her, and she rats uh, her mother out, and all these things go on. It's, it's all very complicated and very interesting. I mean, she writes this, a really interesting novel that keeps you keeps you uh, involved with the flow of things. And this in this particular is just really good, I thought. Uh, April 2024, thank you, New York Public Library, for delivering the book to me once again. And, you know, it's again, it's a, a, a kind of a pity that uh, I don't have to wait for uh, several months to get this brand new book because um, no one else is reading. Where did I... I don't know how I heard that... Uh, Lionel Shriver had this new book out, but uh, somehow I did and went to my computer and uh, went to the New York Public Library and said, put on hold, and it came you know, within a week or so. So I'm happy with the, the New York Public Library and the book, and uh, I, um, you know, I really would like people to read Lionel Shriver if you're interested in reading books at all. Um, there's a... Uh, I listened to an interview with her at, uh, she's also a commentator, so uh, she, she's been writing a column for uh, a spectator, I think, in, in uh, Britain for um, 
several years actually she lived in uh, in England and she also she's American and lives part-time in Brooklyn so she come her summers in Brooklyn and uh, and uh, winters in um, has been wintering in England but now she's left England and has moved to Portugal outside Lisbon somewhere and this uh, all these details came because I uh, I heard her interviewed on uh, what's his Bogosian I think it's Peter Bogosian uh, Peter Bogosian uh, podcast of a recent interview with her where she talks about why she left England and what she's doing in Portugal and you know the situation in these uh, countries where uh, she said you know England's kind of falling apart uh, and uh, as the USA is kind of uh, uh, apparently on the ropes a bit itself so um, and a lot of this stuff is is dealt with in the novel in a way I mean there is there's sort of war going on actually China and Russia do not do the mental parody thing they keep on uh, with the uh, with you know wanting standards and producing you know intelligent people who can do things and so they are uh, you know rising to the top of the, the world in this manner which is kind of what's what's going on in a way as um, the USA sputters around with various um, you know attempts of, of uh, the, the, there's this notion of the left in the USA being this thing that is exclusively concerned with and all about, um, you know, these cultural issues, uh, as in as in the novel that that uh, distract us from everything. And I and I think it, I think this is kind of a plot to make the left. Uh, I mean. As an old person, the left to me meant something about readjusting uh, the economic, um, you know, uh, disparity in the country, like um, you know, getting a little bit of the the wealth out of the rich, the one percent running everything, and uh, you know, uh, just redistributing the wealth in some way, and that that's to me what the left should be and is supposed to be about uh, not all this cultural stuff that uh, you know we all continue to bicker about which you know the class war is what matters as far as I'm concerned it leads to the the war machine it leads to everything else but uh, anyway it's a really good novel and it's uh, it uh, I enjoyed it so so much um the, the she does a, a um, she does a, a a really good ending in this uh, so kind of a surprising ending I didn't know where she was going to go with it uh but um uh let's say that Pearson the main character really gets she she ends up out in the street basically and then something happens after that so uh and uh you know it's it's uh, it's a really uh, a really good i good uh picture of what goes on uh, how how various trends come in and knock out the previous trend and we have a new mania to uh to top the old mania so now we're on this new thing now and so forget the old stuff and um Mania is just really good, and uh, I think very highly of uh, Lionel Shriver. And you know, it's it was an event for me that this book came out, and I was really happy to be able to read it right away. And um, you know, I have to read some of the <laughs> Lionel Shriver novels that I haven't read. I haven't even read uh, We Need to Talk About Kevin, which uh, you know. You know, I kind of run on about serial killers, so forth, or or shooter kill, whatever. But uh, in a way, you know, that I I am supporting of that one because, well, that that put uh, Lionel Shriver on the map and made her a, a a seller, and that's why we still have you know great novels like this, you know, twenty years later almost. So uh, that's it. 
Mania and Lionel Shriver and Mental Parody and uh, now I know you're you're smarter than me. I know I know that some people are smarter than me and and actually, you know, she deals with that in the very end. That that uh, you know, there is there is uh, uh, you know IQ is not everything. There is a uh, a difference in how we how we adapt to life, how we deal with life. And that don't involve intelligence, that involves our ability to be kind, to connect with people, to all, all kinds of, of different things. And so uh, a lot of traits go into making what we are and any sort of scale that judges that is probably going to be off. And, you know, uh, certainly the government and certainly uh, big cultural institutions should not be getting involved with that that kind of thing yeah it has um it has traces you know satire of uh what dei and things like that so uh that's mania or at least uh, my little chat about mania and as i said you can't you can't get anything about the book from talking for listening to me talking about a plot or something like it it's a novel is something where you have to be. You can't, you can't just get it, for, and you can't get it in an adaptation either. It's, it's like when Peter Bogosian, she was talking to Peter Bogosian, and he, he said, uh, he talks about re fiction and not. Re he said, uh, he said, uh, well, I get, I read my uh, nonfiction and watch my fiction, and I, I think that's really. I mean, you might be better off doing the opposite uh, because, uh, you know. And watching fiction, I, I, I'm having trouble watching fiction these days. I, uh, I guess I'll watch Hacks because I enjoyed the other seasons. But and, and I don't know when, uh, when the boys comes back, I might have to get back on Amazon. I don't know, but uh, I, uh, i I've not really been um, drawn to uh, watching movies lately because of the, the whole. They're just too big. It's just too much money and too much. It's just too much. And, uh, you know, that's why I like novels where somebody can just sit and type the thing out. And, yeah, of course, there's a whole mechanism that brings this out and brings it to me, this publishing work and all that. But uh, it's, a, it's a different kind of machine and it's not as, not as ruthless and as scary as the uh, and as l soaked with money as the uh, movie business and and you know I don't like to watch actors have to go through things especially if it's grueling and difficult it's like oh yeah I, I really put myself through all this to act this role and uh, it's like so maybe it's just that I'm old and I don't need to to uh, watch the uh, current movies to be up on the world around me. Uh, so Lionel Shriver's uh, Mania, good book.